Hello, it's Melinda from Scrapbooking and Craft. Just thought I'd come on and do a bit of an update. Um, in the last few weeks I've got lots of Happy Mail videos up, a couple of haul videos, but not many process videos. I've been playing, but I just haven't been filming. I'm having lighting issues, I'm having computer issues, I'm just having issues. Um, and I've started a new project and it's really hard to film. I'm going to try to film me working in it um, this weekend or early next week. Um, so this is another journal I started. I swore at the start of the year I'd have one journal, and I have one, two, three, four, five, five going at the moment. Oops. Um, so this journal was inspired by Courtney Diaz, and if you haven't checked out her channel, I highly recommend it. So she's doing a sewing book series, or an altered book series. And this is a needlecraft book, but um, she's working in the same sort of format, the same, like it's about an A4 size book on the side um, so when you open it up and it, it's a weird format to work in because I'm used to working sort of two pages that way so more of a square format but um, so I'll leave a link below to Courtney's video and she can take you through all of it basically you tear out every second page it has to be a sewn binding um, so when you open up the book you can actually see the stitching on some of the signatures so you tear out half of the pages to allow for the expansion you can see big here near the spine and it's little um, and you leave a little bit I'll show you when I flip open the book um, leave a little of the pages in so you can uh, still secure the spine so her way of working in the book is actually not is a different way of working for me it's actually not working on one complete page which is a different style that I have been doing I've been working on a complete um, a complete page, one page at a time, um, and finishing it, like Mission Inspiration or a few of the inspirations or, or Pick a Stick May or Pick a Stick April. You work through the page and you finish the page, but this book, um, Courtney suggests just adding bits and pieces and building on the pages. Um, so this is, obviously I've left the first couple of pages, I haven't done anything with the cover yet. Um, so this is one of my first pages and her first steps was to just put in scrap papers. So I've added scrap papers. This one I've added rub-ons to. I've added a punch out of some packaging and a stamped girl I had left over. Um, and some more rub-ons down the side. So she's all about going through, and I'm going to have to slide this book, um, going through and adding some of your own artwork, some of your own drawings. So this is one of my pen drawings out of my sketchbook um, that I did. Um, some wrapping paper and some more scraps. So you go through and just add stuff and keep building up the layers and not really thinking about it, just doing it. Um, so this is an example of one of the pages that I've torn out. The reason they're this wide is my steel ruler was that wide and it was easy to put in the spine and rip against it. I've got all the pages that I've ripped out for different things. Um, and you incorporate some of them back into it. So you can add little, this was a little card that I made ages and ages ago. So I've just added that in and I'll go back and decorate the inside and decorate the back one day. It's one of my collages that I photocopied, I stuck in here. I love all these flowers here, so a lot of some of the pages I left in. So as I say, you tear out every second page, but if there's a couple of pages you specifically like that are next to each other, you just keep them in. So you're tearing out approximately 50% of the book, 50 to probably 70% of the book, to allow for all these collage pieces you're going to stick on top of each other. Um, so I'll just flip through, I won't show you every page. Um, because it's a huge book, so some more wrapping paper, just scraps so I've got. This page is probably almost finished. Um, so this page was done over quite a few days. So the black music paper, and then I added this as stickers up here. I added this big die cut that I got from someone. I had all these words, artists create, they were kids things I picked up. So I added some of those randomly throughout the book. And then I created this girl. So her head is actually one of my magazine collages. So there's a magazine collage on a... I think it's a tin, like a tin lantern, and that's been photocopied. And then I made a body out of a map. So you can see it's not realistic, it's not stylized, uh, like it's more stylized and more creative and more fun. And then I decided this looked like a house, plus it was a body. These striped bits are actually bottom pieces of a scan drawing I did of mushrooms. So the mushroom parts are in the book somewhere, and then these are the the hand bits and then I did some little windows and I've drawn around it in black texture. Um, 
so I'll show, show you a few pages. This one I'm not particularly happy with, but I had fun doing the process. So I found some old fairy stickers, um, and then I had these mushrooms drawn in one of my sketchbooks. So I photocopied the mushrooms, stuck the mushrooms in. Um, you can still see the text and the writing behind um, the page is what I wanted. Um, you don't just say these pages, the idea is to show the book through your artwork. Um, don't particularly like the background for this one. It was done with watercolour pencils and I'm leaving it at the moment. It's done. I enjoyed doing it. Um, but I'm not I'm not happy with this bit of washi tape or a bit of duct tape that's stuck here. But that was stuck there before I started adding. Maybe if I stick some over the other side it will tie it in. Um, tie it in with it. Um, so there's a bit of green washi tape up here that I stuck in and then built it to the page. Not sure about this one, but it was fun doing it. It was fun sitting there and doing it. And I may film a process of doing some of these. I'm not sure. Um, the book's very big. So this is building on a Halloween page. So I started with a few scraps of this black or this silver spider paper. And then this bit of tissue paper came in some Happy Mail. Some more of this black duct tape. Some paint that I had extra. I think Alexis had this extra, so I was just plopping it onto pages. And some more spider paper and, and that. So this is going to be a Halloween page. So anything Halloween-y, I'm going to keep building onto this page. Um, so this one doesn't have much on it. So this is another image, a larger image of the one I've used previous. One of my magazine collages that I photocopied. Um, so this page is getting there. Um, so this drawing here is again another one of my photocopied... Um, drawings. At this stage I've only photocopied my black and white sketches from my sketchbooks that I um, use. I haven't actually photocopied any of my completed journal pages and that's another thing Courtney suggests. But I either want to invest in a laser printer or go get some commercially printed but I just haven't got that far yet. I can print the black ones at home and my black ink is permanent so I can modge podge over the top of it. Although a lot of this gluing is just done with a cheap glue stick. Um, the laser copies, I want them to be permanent, so I want them to be in colour. I'll get there eventually. So this is a bit of washi tape I made for a swap, um, and then I just stuck that in. Um, so you can see on this page, I've actually stuck this flap down. Oh, I have on that one too. I have on that one too. See how this flap I've left, this particular one, I've just glued it to the next page. I don't think I've explained the reason. Okay, the reason we do this is when you're working in a book like this, your pages are actually one, so these two pages are actually one folded piece of paper. So if you tear out straight into the spine, this piece of paper will fall out. So if you leave a little bit, you can leave half, I've left like an inch, you can leave half of, half of that page to still secure the page and then you can just glue it down and half the time you don't even see it. Um, or you can leave it as a flap to do what Courtney calls a tip-in. Um, so this is another page here. The other thing you need to do is, I'm only showing you the front of the book. It's going to be a really hard book. Maybe I'll do flip throughs every so often. I don't know yet. It's a hard project to film. Um, you've sort of got to work some in the front, some in the back, some in the middle, so your spine doesn't get all wonky with the amount of paint and glue. So this one I've started with some more scrap paper and a few rub-ons that were really old. Um, this page I think is finished. So give you a good look at this one. Um, so this one started off with some wrapping paper in the background. So I actually covered this bit of red wrapping paper up with the yellow paint. I left this one here. This is one of my drawings that I coloured in with coloured textures. These three postage stamp, faux postage stamps. That's some really old stickers I had. This actually here is part of a cupcake line or I cut up for another project. So it's a great book to actually stick all your scraps in from when you're making projects. This was from an index card. These were from, the teacup was from, it's like a chipboard die cut. Um, it was from a pack of something I was using for something else and didn't particularly use that one. The words are from a really old set of cut up twill like um, ribbon words from that book's like 10 years old. That's one of the first things I bought when I was scrapbooking. Um, and then these black rub ons were really old as well. They were from when I had my shop eight years ago. Um, so it's given me a chance to use up a lot of stuff. Um, and I think this page is done. I don't think I'm going to add anything else to it. Um, I want to get into practice a bit more drawing in this book. At the moment I'm only photocopying my sketches, but I want to get more confident and do that. So this one I've just stuck on. These are from packaging. Stuck a bit of a map up there. So it's great just to stick all your scraps in and keep building up. And when you're sticking them in, Courtney says, just turn off your brain and don't think about it. Just sort of plop them on so we've got 
um, some duct tape offcuts. I had some more wrapping paper offcuts. Another punchy. This is another little teacup collage I did. Bit of offcut of a mega something from another project. Um, what I am being a bit conscious of is that I'm sticking all my collage pieces beyond this tip in piece because if I keep putting a lot in here, the spine's going to expand. So I'm just a bit conscious that I start my um, collaging that way down and then this just becomes colour. This may get stuck down eventually or it may get a tip in stuck into it. Um, I'll just show you a couple more, there's nothing on that page. So this one is actually, the word art is just a die cut of a kids pack I had. This is actually from a book and I just love the buildings. Um, so I cut the buildings out and then the other day I was just doodling over it with a black texture. Um, I may stick something on top of the building yet, I don't know. This is one of the, f this is the first finished page I did and I'll have to share this in two pieces because it won't fit. Um, so this page started off with, I collage four book pages from a marine, really, really old marine sort of book. So you can sort of see the octopus here and um, there's something down here as well. And then this was actually inspired directly from one of Courtney's really old videos. She calls them nook dwellers. They're sort of, they're characters, they're half human, half animal, half quirky. Um, so this is a direct inspiration from one of her mermaids. So the main body is a jelly print. Um, and then I stenciled over the top of it in the blue, so that was cut out. Um, and then the fins are cut out of a metallic envelope. These are punches in here, so I've also got punches in the background. I cut out the head. The glasses are actually um, die cuts. I cut my laser machine for a project ages ago and I just found them hanging around. So I thought I'd make a pair of glasses out of them. And the fins were hand cut as well. So this was all pieced together. So you can imagine this page is quite thick because you've got several, several layers in several spots. Um, these reeds were actually cut out of metallic paper and doodled on. So I'm really happy with this page. Um, this is one of my favourites so far and I've only done sort of three completed pages in the book. Um, but I just was having so much fun this night and just going for it. So there's stenciling in the background. There's punch, circle punch outs from the rest of this sheet. There's circle punch outs. The dots was another sheet of paper I had lying around. Um, then I added some rub-ons and then I went around border to border it so I'm very much in love with this page so this page may be one that I photocopy and then um, tear up and use for other pieces but I'm not sure I might have to photograph this one because it won't fit on my scanner um, not necessarily going to always do double pages I was just feeling a double page um, that night basically it come out of the glasses and then I built the fish around the person around the glasses and then built her body and sort of went with that um, so it is going to be a bit hard to fry a film when my book is very big. This one's another mermaid in process. I have a thing about mermaids lately. So the background is actually a page out of a um, a book. My local library puts out a lot of books and it's like two shopping bags for a dollar. And my daughter and I flip through the books and if they've got really colourful bright images in them we'll grab them and they have a bunch of magazines. So this was like a C page. So the head and the head is one of my magazine collage sheets I've printed out. Then I added the glasses because I thought the oversized glasses look really cool. This one's building into a jellyfish. So this is a head with a... Excuse my phone, just went bip. Um, so it's a head with a... I think that's a cosmetic uh, or something on her head. And then this is a jellyfish body that I cut out. So I cut out the mermaid's body and then I sat there with my circle punch and this is all her scales on her fin. So she actually goes over this tip in which I think is really cool. So I'll obviously decorate the back of her tail. Um, and then we've got sort of a rock here. I might put another little creature here. So I haven't finished this one yet. I don't know where I'm going with it. It's just done. And then on the other page is just the bottom piece of that. So this here is the bottom piece of this book page. So I'll do something else, sea creature over here. Um, it's just a really cool picture I found in one of those same books that Lexis and I have um, put in our cut-up pile. I just really love the, the painting. Um, and then it would add the word paint, added a bit of washi tape. Um, so I might leave that there. A lot more of the pages are just don't have much on them. Oh, hang on, I'll flip to a couple more pages. Um, so these particular pages I'm still working on. So this is, these three bits are actually cupcake liners I used on a project and they were cut offs. So I stuck those on and then 
I decided it was raining one night, raining heavily, so I decided to make some umbrellas. I really don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of the page, but I made these umbrellas. This particular is a photocopy of one of my drawings off my toadstools, and then this one over here is a jelly print, and then that's just a bit of pattern paper. <coughs> so I'm unsure what I'm going to do in the background. Um, just was having fun sitting there doing that. Um, Oh, sorry for my phone, it's beeping again. So another page, this one's just with some pink fluoro paint. I've done that, and I don't know what else I'm going to do to it. I don't know whether I can find any more quick pages. Um, so some other pages have got... Probably would suggest not getting such a big book. Oh, this one's got a bit on it. Um, these purple flowers are actually from my shopping list. I've got a memo pad shopping list on my fridge for each week's shopping and every time we run out of something in the household we mark it down. And I love the flowers on it so I've just stuck five there for no particular reason and a bit of purple off cut of a jelly print down the bottom. So I'll build something on this eventually. Um, so I may do some process videos um, of me working in this. Um, I may just do some flip throughs. But this is a different style of journaling if you're... Um, I want to get into art journaling but a bit scared of the whole page um, or completing the whole page. This one you sort of just add fragments and just build from there. Um, so this is some pattern paper, a really old scrapbook sticker, some rub-ons, another word imagine. And this is a girl that I drew, um, got inspired from someone on YouTube or Facebook, I can't remember with this one. Um, or it might have been my own creation. Um, but again, cut that out and stuck it in. I'll add legs to her and I might add something else to it eventually. Um, the only thing you do have to sort of realise is you have to work some in the back of the book, some in the front of the book. Um, what else have I done down here? I haven't done much at all. I'll show you this page and then we might wrap it up. So I've got these really gaudy rolls of green washi tape and I thought I'll have to get these used up. So I love how the text is showing through the washi tape and this is actually a jelly print of one of my stencils that I sell in my store so I stuck that in there. Don't know where the rest of the page is going. But I think I may have rambled for enough, so I thought I'd introduce you to this new form of journaling. If you haven't checked out Courtney Diaz, it's a must-see. Um, she's a very talented artist, and I'm learning lots from this series. So it's a free series on her YouTube channel called The Sewing Book. I'll just flip into my favourite page. The Sewing Book. The Sewing Book. The Sewing Book Journal, I think it's called. I'll put a link to the first video. So um, she's going to do different... Um, different like little mini lessons that we can then go and put into our book. So the first one was like secure the scraps and she showed us how just to paste in scraps and photocopy some of our previous pages and include them and all, do all different things. She's done a scrap monsters which I haven't actually made any scrap monsters and stuck it. I've made scrap monsters and if you don't know what scrap monsters are go and google scrap monsters on her channel. They're just little um, little monsters and critters that are made out of scraps and they will go in here as well. I just haven't, I've made a few of them with my daughter but I haven't actually got around to it. Um, but I hope you enjoyed sort of what I've currently been working in. I will see if I can do some process videos, whether I just put them to music or whether I do a voiceover when I get a bit better at editing, I don't know. I will eventually cover the cover, but I don't really want to do a lot to the cover um, and then get it damaged while I'm working in it, so I think the cover might be the last thing I do. The only thing, also, if you're looking for a book, and I may, should have mentioned this at the start, um, I've been rambling for a while now, you're wanting a book from like the 60s or the 70s that isn't glossy. You're wanting like a... Like the feel of a paperback novel, but thicker, if you get the drift of that. Not like a shiny magazine, because you paint and that won't stick to it so much. And we necessarily don't gesso every page, because it's nice to have the bits of the original book showing through in parts. So thank you for watching and listening to my rambling, and Courtney Diaz is doing a beautiful um, workshop, and I'll definitely link her below, because it's worth checking out. Different style of journaling, and when I just, at night, if I just want to sit and play... And I don't really want to get out my whole art journal and think through a whole two hour, three hour process video. I can just sit for half an hour and stick some papers in or I can just stick some paint in. Um, so it's loads of fun. And I'm enjoying it, thoroughly enjoying it. Alexa's actually done a book as well and she'll do a video on hers um, as well. She's doing a similar book, not a needle craft book. Um, she's got a really beautiful, beautiful book to work in. So thank you for watching and I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye for now.